Uh, this is my friend, uh, one of the coaches, Larry Huffman, he's a pro fighter, a uh, real nice guy. He's uh, been with me for uh, over a decade and a super nice guy. Like I said, works all the coaches with the kids and the fighters and, and, uh, and good guy to have around. Now, we're going to be helping tonight specifically. Jason Wood sent me a little, a uh, couple little short video clips about judo head arm Casey Katami escapes and a couple finishes off there. We're going to kind of speed through there. Again, when we're putting these, these videos out, guys, it's just trying to kind of give a, tease, a little teaser, a few helpful details. We're not spending like an immense amount of time trying to make these 100% correct. Um, if you want to do 100% correct, come get in the gym, uh, join our team if you're local, uh, get an affiliate school, um, have me come into a seminar, um, whatever you need to do. But uh, we are trying to hit a few good tips. It's not, but we're not really, you know, it's not for sale. You're not paying for it. It's free. So, like I said, we're kind of speeding through it, spur of the moment, and uh, we really don't even know what we're gonna shoot exactly until it's over with, basically. But anyway, so but here's the question: You had the judo head arm. Some things about this: You would prefer to get the underhook. This is the better version. But sometimes off the throws, you just end up here. So a couple things that you can do. For one, I don't want this elbow lower than the deltoid. Anytime it's lower and his deltoid's rounded, that's gonna allow him to get a good grip on my back, kind of scoot his hip underneath me, and throws me back into these back positions and maybe stack me up and break my ribs or get get the top, take back, or put me in a truck position, something like that. So we don't really wanna do that. So we do wanna keep this up nice and high. The second thing you can do, if you want to really cause this guy a problem, you want to turn your hand upside down and where that tip of that elbow is, you want to put that, those two bones there and you want to bring his ear to his deltoid with your hands. To get that tight, a lot of times I'll come all the way over to this position and now it's locked in tight. So when I set through, it's in a shoulder lock and it works like a, a double wrist lock Camira that chicken wing that direction and breaks the shoulder so if he's got me here and he and i feel like he's going to rotate me i put my hand under i'm going to drive over and lock that into place now that that ear is on that deltoid when i set through that rips that through okay fortunately 99 percent of the planet that does this doesn't understand that and so they're doing something like this and they're just holding so some things if you're in this position and you want to hold it i want to stay lower my head down so he doesn't like bring his arm in front of me or any of that kind of stuff like that. If he does, he brings his arm front. You actually want to pull it across and try to get your head up here by his elbow. It's much harder for him to push and you can control it. And then there's some submissions and stuff we can do from here. I'm going to show you. Now, my, my best goal is to get him, one, to let go of my body and to put his arm somewhere up here so I can do an arm bar or a shoulder lock or a wrist lock or, or a neck crank, anything like that. So to get him to do that, I'm going to push his head across this hand comes through, I grab my shoulder, and then I'm going to press down so that he's in a choke. That choke will choke him completely out. Generally, he doesn't want to get choked completely out, and I can hold him with my chin in his eye, or like this, or in the jaw, or just you can just roll his ear up upside down so it's biting that. Whatever you got to do to get that exposed. So what will happen is, as I go to choke him, he'll bring that arm around. Now when he does, he'll use my elbow to trap it. Place it behind my leg. Now, what I usually do so he doesn't work is I bring my elbow all the way to the armpit on the other side, drop it right through that hole, and then as I elevate his head or I can seat travel back, that's going to catch that shoulder lock. Some other things you can do though is as he brings that hand in front and I make that catch, I can just bring this hand here, and then as I press, it works like a lever, and that can break it there. Or you can drive down on the wrist and start working the wrist cranks. See, how that, I'm just putting that wrist on my knee, and as I lift my knee up, that's going to pop that there. Even if it's turned this way, it doesn't matter. You'll get the flexor tendons. See, like that right there. You can push them all the way to there. So that's going to cause him, when I start putting that pressure, it's going to cause him to want to open up to make an escape. When he opens up, I'll catch here. When I go to go to pull on here and he goes to open up straighter, he's going to give me this. If he tries to roll his hand down here like that, so I can press and come forward. Every time it goes to a different position, I just change the angle like that. Boom. So I'm going to constantly be attacking that arm. Like I said, if it's in that position there, you can work that. You can come around. Now look here. A lot of times when you're doing Brazilian type jujitsu, whatever you want to do, they'll pass that arm across. And you're coming down and you're working your arm triangle. If you're in this version and you're already in Kesa, a lot of times what they'll do is if I'm holding here, it's they'll just bring them up on the side. And then just press it. 
here. So I'm just, see the neck is like this. And it's an arm triangle still, but I put it on my thigh and I just press down. And I don't have to lay down, I don't have to get down. It's just my thigh becomes like an anvil. And you just press your chest and your deltoid. My deltoid is pressing into here. So I was in Kesa. He's like answering the phone. So I just come up. I let my forearm get to there, make that grip, and then just press. And as I press, I get a good submission here. So these are just a few, very, very few things that I can do from this head arm position. So he's talking about how can I how can I escape? Now one of the main things people do, let me do this one more time, is they try to take your back. Yeah. Now, back in the day, this move is from like Indonesian sea lock, and Eric Paulson was doing it. And then he showed a guy that he was doing a private lesson with, and then when the, like he showed that guy to the, that day, and that day goes, hey, let me show you this move. And he showed the guy he did the private lesson with showed Boss Rutten. Boss Rutten fought in pride and won with it, and it became a, a move in MMA. But it was from. Uh, an Indonesian arm. But anyways, most of the time they try to get close to you to take your back. So when they do, you're just going to roll in and you hook that, you get your legs together, and then when I press, it becomes a choke, and I can choke him out from here, and that helps with the back. Don't forget we did in the beginning, if this hand is here, and that's locked in, if he tries to take my back from here, he breaks his own shoulder. So this is a good counter also. So a lot of the reason that people take people's back is because they suck at Kisukatami and don't understand this position. And that's the majority of the reason. But nevertheless, taking his back's a good option because most people don't do the position right. So you should take your back. So I'm going to give you a, uh, just a couple escapes from here because that's what Jason asked for. One is the oldest, the oldest in the world. We talked about this before. Um, come around on this side over here. We'll watch this stand up here. Looking at it standing, if he's got my arm real tight and I try to pull my arm out, my arm doesn't come because my elbow, it's not how strong he is, it's my thumb is up and my elbow is I pull and I flex my boss if I drive my elbow into his forearm. So what I want to do is take my delta, I want to jam my deltoid in him and flip my arm down so that this comes up and it comes out very easy. So I'm here, boom, then it slips and he can't grip it. So there it goes. It's the elbow that's a problem, so you want to get your elbow away. So it's going to be the same thing on the ground here. He's basically doing that same position. So I don't try to get this arm out. I'm just going to let my thumb roll with it. So what I want to do is I'm going to drive into him so that he pushes down on me. And then I'm going to turn the complete opposite way. And I turn the back of my head so the back of my head comes out of the hip. And I'm going to turn here and I'm going to let it roll. As it does, that hand is going to catch that arm that's underneath my head. I want to break him down in that position. And then from here, I can work to the hammer lock on this side over here. So, let's turn this way. So he's got it. I kind of push into him. He pushes back. I'm going to turn. I catch that one. I try to break him down. Lock him in. And then attack to the hammer lock. If I'm in this position here and his hip is up, you can always come in and attack his back even further if that's what you need to do. All right? So that's one. Very easy, just a quick spin. Especially if you do it right, like he throws you with a head arm throw. As soon as you hit the ground, you roll to your knees and drive out it that way. Now, uh, a real common one that people do is when I'm here, I'm going to take my hand and I turn it palm up and I put my forearm bone real tight, upside down, underneath his floating ribs. Now I'm going to drive him forward so I can get my hips underneath him. At that point, I'm going to flip him over with a bridge up to his neck. Then I put my leg behind him and come over here so I catch my knee. Can you see that? Yes. Now I'm driving my knee and that forearm bone is sticking in that front rib. So when I compress it, it breaks his ribs and gets a compression choke up. there. Okay, so one more time. So it's going to be here. I turn my palm upside down. I'll make a bridge, I'll get underneath him, clean him up, I catch him here, and then I fold him over my floor, and I'm getting that choke. And try to fold his body over my forearm as his legs come up and get that break. So that's a that's a good solid one there. Another one is that I'm gonna be in this position here. I'm gonna bring him backwards. As I get it here, 
back, and then I get my leg over. Once I get my legs locked into position, and I've got that controlled, I take my hand, I stick my hand between me and him. Don't do anything, just stick it here. Now I'm gonna pop with my hips, I'll pop him up. He comes over, that hand that was in between us pops right out that hole, catch his head, and you pull him, and you've got a twister. All right, so let's do that one a little bit better. Okay, so he's here. Okay, I'm gonna drive him down. Back. I'm gonna lock that in. Now that I got his hip in good control, hand comes between, bridge him over. Catch, don't let that arm come out from underneath your head. Keep this nice and tight. And pull. Okay, so you have the twister position. Another one. The main thing I think of when he first grabs me is not with this arm, but I'd like to get this elbow to the floor between me and him and get it get it down to where it's protected so I don't get all these arm locks, shoulder locks. So I'm going to walk my hips this way to create space because when he's here and he's holding it, there's not enough space for my elbow to go down. So I'm going to hold this in, a, in an S grip, like a skeletal type grip. I'm going to take my feet away, the back, and then that's going to slip that elbow to the ground. Now you can grab that wrist so it can't punch you. You can't, you can't do that. Okay, now from there, I can scoot over me, bring him over. Now I can attack his back. Come in and work my choke. The last one of these basic escapes I want to see. A lot of times, hang on, you see where they bring their leg up over their head, and then they drag the guy back. Well, if the guy keeps his head low, that's difficult, and you have to time it. If you don't have good flexibility, that's time Or if you have good flexibility, the guy got leg locks, you get your, your foot in front of there, and he drives it down, and he starts breaking it while your foot's in your face. So you want the power of the leg, but you want to hip out and get on your side. When you come up, you're going to reach underneath your leg and hook, hook his chin. So when he goes back, not only that, but you can open his chin up so you can come into and finish with a scissors choke. Okay, so he's going to be here. I'm going to hip out, get on my side, not just push here, and I bring my leg up, and then I hook. Now I'm going to slide my legs together, hold that arm, and then I get to choke here. So that way if he starts to, if he grabs my foot, like I'm here, and he grabs my foot, I can let my hand go and get that leverage. He can't get it up in front of his face and get his neck and his back into it. So we're here. I come out. I catch. Bring that down. And then work that choke. I can be turning it. And work into the camera as well. Okay. So those are some basic uh, finishes from Case Katami and some basic escapes from Case Katami. So appreciate it.